Um, and actually, I did that as well. Yeah, so what I might do is, because it's always good to sync these kind of things up to the music so that you can have it flashing um, left to right. So I'm going to open up the other show, the dance show. And we'll just zoom out. And we'll just scroll along to... Oh, oops, I'm just coming right out there. Scroll bar at the moment. So we'll go along to a little piece here. Now, um, maybe it is best if I show you on the other show. Sorry, excuse me. So what we'll do is we'll add a line, and now I'm going to put in some audio that we can um, sync this um, chaser sequence up to. So I'm going to add an object and it's going to select the library. Now you'll notice um, when you already have Windows open, so I've got the DMX board, the fixture library and the object library are already here. So when I select them here, it's just going to highlight it for me and remind me that I've got it open and minimized. So we'll just bring it up. And we've got some audio objects in here. So this is stuff that I've loaded. So you go new audio object, put in some music from your computer. So this is the track that I'm using. It's by my friend Oscar the Grouch. Um, you should look him up on the internet because he's really good at what he does. Um, so you can see here we've got the audio. Now when we push play it's going to make some sound. <laughs> What we really want is to find out where the beats are on the light and, and the audio because that's what you're going to want the lights to react to. So what we do is we select the audio channel. You can see that one's selected. Now let's just click on it to select the audio channel. Right click, go to beats and beats. And then we want to scan for beats. Now it's important you've got to add a new beat layer. Um, and this is important because you really might want some multiple speeds going on. You know, you might um, want one of your lights to be reacting to every single beat um, very fast. And then say you wanted another one to be moving a little bit more slowly, say to every four beats or change every 16 beats. Um, the way to do that is to add different beat layers in. Um, so we're just going to do an automatic beat layer, so I'll click on it and then I'm going to hit scan for beats and it's going to go through the whole song and find some beats and it does a pretty good job. Um, sometimes there is some, some little errors, um, but yeah, the, so the other way that you can do it if you really want to um, get a cheap perfection is you can actually put in the beats yourself by clicking here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and do that. I'm going to start the song, okay, hit record, okay. and then let me get up to the music here. You can see that as I click, we're getting the beat, and I might just swap to one of four. Or I can click on every beat. So now we've got our um, beats in there, um, and just to go back to what I meant about uh, the beat layers, so if we add another one, you'll see that the green lights have gone because they are selected on this beat layer. So we're going to go this one, and we'll do our slow beats, so we'll start a chord. <laughs> And then we 
whichever beat layer you've got selected in this beats window is um, the tempo that you can set your lights to. So I'm going to go back to that one, hopefully. Yep, there we go. So it takes a bit of time because my computer is being slow. So that's all done, and you can keep going like that for the whole song. I've just chosen to do this section because we're going to do a quick demonstration. So you can see we've got our fade and wait times um, for this effect. And uh, if we just zoom in a little bit, oh, quite a bit. Um, you will see that we've got, I want to open it, fade time zero, wait time of half a second. So you can see the fade times I can move if I want, but if I just want on, off, on, off quick switches, then I'm just going to leave them at zero. Um, obviously all of these you can drag with your eye if you like. But what's quite a lot easier and quicker is to match them up to our little beat markers that we've put in. So if I zoom back out again, one of the really important, it's really actually a useful tool, um, is these little left and right markers here. Um, so you can jump to those positions using these buttons. What they're most useful for is um, defining a part of the music that you want uh, to be connected to. That's kind of a funny way of putting it. But I'll just show you. It's easiest just to show you. So if I select this first part of the track here, we've got these beats. And then I will select this track, go to beats. And remember, we're not really using fade time, so I want to go to wait times and go arrange on beats and it's asking you which audio track you want to arrange because you might have more than one along your whole timeline so i'm going to choose this one the move is ruby and then when we zoom in here you will see that these lines are all bang on the beats um and That's a really, really useful and simple way to do it. And what I can do here is we're not actually limited to the length. So if I was to take this right thing out here and do this again, so beats, arrange on beats. See, it's going to actually go to the whole length of music that I've got in between the left and right markers. So I'm not explaining that this what that well, but it, say you had different seek, uh, sections of music and you really wanted some different looks. So if you didn't want these um, park ends to be going the whole time, which you probably don't, you could choose a section of the music. Um, so maybe you only want this part. And then when you told it to arrange on the beats, it would just fit it into here as opposed to um, the whole way along. But let's just see what we've managed to do here. So we've got our two park ends and as you can see, as the beat sounds, right, and we should be able to test it working when we go to our every fourth beat. Cool. So that is how to make a really simple chaser and sync it up to the beat. Which is a simple step, but it's a really, really good step to get underway. Um, and then what I might show you is how to do the same thing with um, some moving heads. So I'm going to use some ones that we've already got in there. Oh, I want to put my 
fascinator away. There we go. Back in the naughty corner. Um, so how about I use these four moving heads that we've got in the middle here. Um, and those are the active scans. And we'll just test. See, I've got two sets. I think you'll find those in the ones on the corners. So I actually want to select that group instead. Oh, it's being mischievous. Uh, we've got to open the shutter and select a color. Ah, uh, that's why. I'm going to turn off the gobo. Just want to set the intents. Ah, sorry. Okay. Uh, takes a bit of trial and error. So we have got different options here. What I was doing was opening the dimmer, so opening the shutters, but what I hadn't done is actually turned the fader, the intensity fader, up. So you need to learn to use your fixtures. They, they all sort of work a little bit differently because we've, we've just made them uh, replicas of the real lights. Um, so anyway, we, we have got our four active scan moving heads in the middle here and quite like that blue or that orange maybe what we'll do is we will make them change from blue to orange and then we'll make them move around to the beat some kind of pattern it's maybe something like that 